Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Tony Haggard, Nike Hot Seat Special Guest for Takedown Media today. He had the best match of day one from the second World Olympic qualifier, and it was Jesse versus Franz Hertunian of Sweden. He wins by fall, does our guest. And Tony, are you super excited to talk to Jesse Thilke? Oh, this is a rising star in uh, Greco in wrestling. And uh, no, no, this... no, no, no. He was once considered a rising star. Now he is there. Yeah. Now all he needs to do is be <laughs> that guy. He's a technician. He's a mechanic. He's got the tools. He's got to employ everything all at once. Yeah, he's uh, he has arrived officially. Uh, he's a 2016 Olympian, mm. and uh, that was a lot of something that uh, we weren't for sure if we we're going to be able to call Jesse here uh, just a week ago, and he got the job done. Well, was it about <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> was it three days ago, Jesse, or how many days ago was it? I lost count traveling okay. back and forth all over the world. I don't know. I'm pretty sure today's Monday, right? Yesterday was Mother's Day. Gave my mom a call. That's that's all I know that's going on. Okay. I'm back, to work. I'm back to work today. <laughs> all right. You reached the finals uh, in, in a roundabout way. I mean, you... You fell there, and, and we'll give you that one because you literally traveled halfway around the world to do so, but uh, it was a tech fall, so it's not like you pinned you, but there were gut wrenches involved, and uh, I mean, yeah. Surian is very difficult uh, to, to, to wrestle Yeah, that's with. probably who I'm going to have to beat to get gold in, uh, in Rio, but I'm up to challenge. Well, let's talk a bit about your road there. Uh, we go over to Tony Hager. He'll start things off for us. Tony? Well, uh, Jesse, I kind of want to just go back to uh, learn a little bit more about you. You're kind of, uh, you know, you wear your heart on your sleeve, and uh, literally, uh, a lot of people are wanting to know where this honey badger comes from. You got a tattoo <laughs> on your left arm, and how did that all get started? Uh, what, when I was 18, 19 years old? Uh, 18 turned to 19, uh, last Olympic cycle, and I came out here. I finished high school. I finished high school this year out here after state, and uh, my friend Jimmy Chase, he was here training me, him, Ben Provisor, Ellis Coleman. That was that was the crew back in the day. And uh, Jimmy one day comes up to me and he said, Jesse, I, you're going to Wisconsin uh, for school. You're from Wisconsin. I figured out your spirit animal. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you, what are you talking about, Jimmy? Comes on and he shows me, he Googles a honey badger, and he shows me all these videos and all these things. And... Um, <laughs> well, needless to say, the rest took care of itself from there. Uh, it's, the honey badger is fearless, to a, somewhat to a point of stupidity, uh, brave, crazy, and he fights like there's no tomorrow, and it just perfectly matches up with who I am and what I do on the wrestling mat, and now we're here. <laughs> yeah, you've kind of embraced, I would say, that character now. You once uh, said, troublemakers make the best wrestlers. And they do. That's the only reason I'm here today. <laughs> You know, what What has been the road, the, the toughest part of the road to get you where you're at now? You know, it, getting in trouble and, and persevering through that or? Yeah, you know, getting in trouble, starting out when I was younger. I mean, I would be in reset before I started wrestling at recess. I would I would be so competitive playing tag, playing football, doing whatever. I would get in fights with these in first and second grade with these six year old kids. I'm just whomping them on the playground because I want to win so bad. And then wrestling kind of just gave me that, that channel where I could put my energy into it and I could see positive effects directly come from my effort. And I mean, what more can you ask for when you're a troubled kid and you need some guidance, you know, and you're a little too smart for your own damn good in first and second grade. And it was, it was perfect. It worked out. It saved my life. I don't know. Wrestling, uh, I, you know, that's what's so great, I think, about the sport is when someone says, hey, wrestling saved my life from, uh, you know, being a troublemaker. And and that's, uh, yep. that's what's so great, I think, about your story and growing up, you know, through wrestling and getting out of trouble or finding, I guess, your way. Mm -hmm. Did you have an idol in Greco or in wrestling? Did you know that you were going to be a well, Gre Greco Well, Greco was super easy for me because I had people like Garrett Lowney and Dennis Hall who had coached me while I was growing up who were seasoned veterans, medalists, champions in their own right. So Wisconsin has a rich, rich tradition of Olympic wrestlers. So I got really lucky there. I had all of these guys to look up to. I mean, freestyle side, the Petersons, there's just, I could, I could go on and on, you know, there's, 
so many great wrestlers that have come through Wisconsin and the Midwest area. So I was very blessed in that way and in that sense. It just made it easy. I got to work with those guys. They coach me. You know, it's it was easy. I didn't have to do too much. I just showed up and wrestled. It's it's interesting that you would say it's easy. For, for many, um, Greco is very difficult in that as much as it might be fun, uh, it's very difficult to to um, restrict yourself to the movements allowed, to the moves that are allowed. It's, We're a, talk- whole, it's a completely different world, especially when you go uh, from folk style converting over to Greco. It's literal. There's some things that are literal opposites. But as we saw in the Swedish match, uh, if you keep wrestling like you do in folk style, uh, anything can happen in Greco. Anything can happen, indeed. We're talking to our, our U.S. star at 59 kilos. He'll be representing the United States at the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He is the honey badger, Jesse Thilke. And it's important we put the name David in there because apparently there's a couple other Jesse Thilkes wandering around uh, uh, planet Earth. Did you know that? I had no clue. I thought it was the only one, but, you know, for right now, I'm the only one that matters. You're the only... Do you know where I was going? Did you look up my script or what? <laughs> no, <laughs> we're just on the same page, brother. Well, uh, you, you mentioned uh, wrestling. If you continue to wrestle through those matches, and uh, what, what stuck out to me was that duck under that you hit. Personally, when I'm watching Greco, I don't see a whole lot of duck unders hit because usually there's a leg foul, but you were able to... <laughs> pull out i would say a, a bag of tricks from your folk style moves is that something that you've been yeah, working on to, i've kind to of a you know being a super tall lanky skinny white kid in greco not the best body type the best uh you know you think of greco remembers these short stocky guys that can get under you in great position and push you around and lift you and that's not me but uh you know i may not be the biggest or the strongest but i'm going to be the smartest guy out there it's a chess match i'm going to pick my battles and uh, hopefully be two or three steps ahead of you. And that's just what I did a little bit. You know, I've been not being very strong, and I had to develop kind of this hybrid style of where uh, I duck under and I level change and I snap and I move and I chain wrestle from top or bottom. And a lot of my points you saw were scored two and two or four four right away because I don't stop and other guys relax. And that's, again, in the Swedish match, that guy relaxed and I reversed him and, and got the fall. You know, it's stuff like that that people aren't doing in Greco, but I'm not defined by those limits. Did you just recently developed that or have you been wrestling out of the ties it's been it's been years and years in the making pretty much all my greco training every summer i had to do on my own in madison me and just a couple of my buddies rolling around all the time and they would sacrifice their bodies and let me drill and drill and drill and drill and it started it started there um and it's kind of blossomed and developed into this this crazy beautiful technique uh and our dance out there, if you will. And once I get going, no one, no one can handle my pace, my style, my tempo, especially on our feet and parterre. All I got, it's easy. I just got to work on my parterre, and no one's going to touch me for years to come. Dude, you came out in in what I described, and many agreed uh, with with the best match of day one. You came out from bottom, and you came around. You put the guy to his back. You put uh, your opponent to his back. And what was best about that, Hartunian was expecting that he was going to control you, but you came around, and then you floated over after you put him on his back, and then you floated back yeah. over. I don't even know if you know. Oh, I had, to keep dan- I had to keep dancing my hips around to try to go for the fall, but, I mean, I could, I could smell. I could taste the blood. You put those foreigners on their back. They don't get up very often. And, with you know, at a tournament like that where the stakes are as high as they were, I, I I saw his throat and I went for it and that was the end of it. He when, wasn't getting up. I was winning that match. When the challenge block came in, um, what were your thoughts at that point when the challenge block was thrown in that match? And I'm talking about they do the, that the because it's just a last it's a last ditch effort. It's why not? You never know. But I mean, he had already been beaten and broken. It didn't matter if we had to keep wrestling, go back on our feet. Um, I had scored multiple points. And if I had to, even if they took the fall away and I was still losing 4-2, I would have found a way and gone out there. And there was still time on the clock. There was time for me to win. And the way I'd been wrestling on my feet, the way I was able to create action and angles and scoring, there was no doubt in my mind I was going to come back and get it done. You came off that match with Tertunian, and in front of you was a very tough cat from, uh, uh, I think it's MDA. Modo- is that Moldova? Yeah, Moldova. Yeah, yeah. Moldova. Uh, Donya Islamov. And uh, you win this one by tech fall. This is what we describe as a house of fire, 
Right now, you're in a very positive momentum, uh, very, very aggressive. How do you channel that? I mean, this is just, like I said, this has been years in the coming, years in the making. My Greco coaches and I have been working since I was a, you know, a cadet bumping up to juniors, and I made all my junior world teams, and I spent every summer out here, and I finished you know, high school out here. I have been so much time, effort, and energy put into this, and I'm just now, you know, starting to peak and blossom and become the athlete that I meant to be. And we're just going to stick to the process. I mean, this is part of the plan. Phase one was trials, win that dominating fashion. Phase two, get the weight qualified, get myself a chance to wrestle in Rio. And you know, phase three, we go full Super Saiyan training, and we just for the next, you know, 90, 100 days. Like there's no tomorrow and get ready for the games and let it all fly exactly like I've been doing. You know, this time, this time frame where you had, you know, one, you had to make the team and then two, you had to know that you were the guy to qualify the weight. Do you wish, wish that the, maybe the trials were earlier or you had more time to recoup? I wish that I had, in, in retrospect, looking back, now I'm grateful for it, it, that it happened exactly as it did and I proved to myself and and an international competition when it really mattered that I can wrestle and make things happen on the world stage against anyone. I mean, now looking back at things, I, I can be anyone in the world on any given day at my weight class in Greco World Wrestling. I think everyone knows that now. Everyone's seen it. I've proved it time and time again when it mattered most. And now I just get to relax, train for a couple months, don't have to cut weight, and, you know, the sky's the limit. Hey, you, you have been doing this for a while. And that's what a lot of people, I think, that are not ingrained with Greco know about you. I and mean, you made four consecutive Greco world teams as a in, in your youth days. And the only person to do that has been Taylor Lamont, up and coming. Yeah. I got to imagine that he's looking up to you. He's the He was you. Maybe maybe he didn't have a troubled youth. I don't know. But using <laughs> you as an idol. But, uh, you know, is that... Uh, you you consider Greco an art, and is it does it make you feel good that there's young kids out there trying to perfect the art like you are? Absolutely. Uh, anyone getting involved with wrestling at that high of a level and that much dedication and time to me is a beautiful thing because um, for me it saved my life, and maybe for other people to save their lives, and for some people it's just a pastime. But to put that much effort and blood and sweat and tears into it only positive things are going to come for that on and off the map for those people developing as human beings every day and growing as men and women all around the world you know everything that they do everything that they go through they're going to pass that on in the future maybe through wrestling maybe through their careers you never know and just to see people getting that involved and that ingrained in the sport i already can see the effects can see the ripples starting you know now and it's going to be an amazing thing to see in 10 15 years down the road where you're, they come, where they go, and how they affect the world. You're on your phone. I believe it was at the trials, and Dan Gable uh, <laughs> hit you on your back, and he said, Le- he said "Legends never oh, die." Man. What? How? Where? What? Tell me a little bit more uh, about he, this story. I was on my phone looking down, just kind of talking to my family, and we were doing uh, extra signings and autographs and stuff. And I was telling my parents, "You know, just go back to the hotel. Uh, I'll get a ride from my coaches. I'll meet you there. Start celebrating." Like, congratulations, we did it. You know, we made we made the dream a reality. Uh, and I'm on my phone, and all of a sudden, I can feel the smack, like on the perfect, the soft spot of the back of your head. Like, and I saw, it's like, who in the name? And I look up, and of all people, last person I expect, like, last person you expect to look up to from something like that is Danny freaking Gable looking at you. <laughs> and I see him, I was like, because I was about to have a smart-ass combat, comeback, because, you know, it was just smack me on the back of the head. Like, what's going on? I'm a honey badger. What did you say? What's up? And uh, I got look up and I just, you know, just just a blank stare in my face, shake his hand. And he just nodded his head and walked away. Didn't even need to say anything like his eyes told the whole story. And I had already known what I had accomplished that day. And that to me was like a very full circle defining moment of, uh, of the journey that I've been through and others recognizing the journey that I'm going through. And I think that's really cool to me. I think that is ultimately perhaps where we need to end. But uh, I've. I've... G- Gable can have those moments with a guy like you, and only you two will understand that. Only guys that have reached exactly. that level. And, uh, yeah, it's a Gable moment. <laughs> uh, one of many beautiful ones. God bless that, man. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, he's led by example throughout life. Uh, we're talking with uh, Jesse Thilke. He is the honey badger. And, of course, uh, he joins a rather prolific team, people that have put in the work to help rebuild Team USA Greco. And I'm talking about guys like Andy Besick at 75 kilos, Ben Provisor, who's been like a bull in a china closet at 85, Robbie Smith, the talented big man in striped socks. These are your teammates for Team Greco. We feel bad about Rayvon Perkins at 66. We feel terrible about the Rao Plow, Joe Rao at 98. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you say to your two teammates as they, they travel back to the U.S. with you and they didn't qualify, their Olympic dreams are done? Uh, you know, it was something that I was sitting in, in Istanbul getting ready for my flight back, thinking about a lot, um, pretty much on my mind as soon as I finished dressing. You know, those guys have been grinding with me for years and just more recently, the specific trip of going over there to qualify the weight and, and going and, and not calling at the first one, having to train in Hungary and then going to Istanbul and these all these crazy things that have been happening in the training and I never would have been able to do what I was able to do without them. They, they're my brothers in arms that we've been battling for years and they, they held me up when I was stumbling. You know, they caught me when I was falling, they kept pushing me forward. Um, and I'm forever grateful for them. And I, I know in the future that we're going to win a team title together. So it's, it's just a matter of time for them. Jesse, tell folks where they can find you on social media. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, what is the Twitter handle is at Dilke under dash smooth. Uh, Facebook, I would just search Jesse David Dilke. And Instagram, I think it's JD Dilke. Uh, I'm, I'm not into it too much. I, I like to... Uh, to live and, and, and experience things more than just record them all the time. But if you need anything, I got you. It, it, speaking of Twitter, Freddie Stroker, I put out a tweet earlier today. <laughs> and he, <laughs> My <guy. laughs> yeah, he, he wanted to know uh, what, is the, what is the highest level you've gotten in zombies? Uh, I believe it was 48 with my buddies Jordan Oliver and Tyrell Fortune. We got to 48. It was a five-hour game. Uh, Freddie plays with us all the time. We got a little squad. We, we, we get, we get some people fired up on Xbox live. That's for sure. They're not too happy with us when we beat them game after game after game. <laughs> and, uh, we love it. We love winning in everything that we do. And it's always a fun time and it's, it's the good people, good vibes. So you're one of the guys that actually bought into Xbox five. I'm holding out for Xbox eight. Uh, yeah, that's incredible. probably smart. I've heard that the internal process around that bad boy is going to be unreal. It's going to be so fast. It'll be like being there. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be like being there, and then you'll be there before the game even starts. It'll be unbelievable. Exactly, a little virtual reality. Jesse, you're a trip, dude. I love you, and uh, no, Tony has so much appreciation for what you've been able to do, and I agree with him. Our special guest today, Nike Hot Seat uh, guest today, is Jesse Thilke. They call him the Honey Badger. Who do you want to thank on the way out? You've mentioned Dennis Hall, Garrett Lowney, the Petersons, uh, everybody at I mean, there's, uh, USA there's Wrestling. So, there's so many different people, um, coaches, friends, family, uh, siblings alike. It's, it's unreal. Just anyone who was ever there for me that during this crazy tumultuous journey, uh, up and down and up and down, they just as long if you ever stuck by my side, uh, through thick and thin, y'all know who you are. Thank you. I wouldn't be here without you. And uh, just keep believing we're almost there. Do me a favor. It's, see, it's time for the gun show. Give me a couple uh, shots of the guns. Come on. <laughs> These skinny little guys. <laughs> yeah. That's why we do duck unders. <laughs> That's why we do yeah. duck unders. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're going to know when it hits. Don't say One I day. didn't warn you. Jesse Thilke, thank you so much, my brother. Congratulations. Continued success in training. And it's uh, the countdown is on. We're looking for. Are you going to be in uh, Los Angeles? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I wish that'd be super cool, especially in a city like LA during the World Cup. But I think we're we're going to be training training here by then already. I know next week we got to Concord for the Junior Greco World Duels. I'm pretty sure we're out there where Robbie is from and Coach Halverson, one of our shared coaches through Greco. So the whole team is going to be out there training, excited, looking forward to that. Bay Area can't be mad. Can't be mad about any of that, and uh, uh, we'll see what's next after that. I'm just taking it day by day and just, you know, getting ready for the games. Day by day, indeed. Jesse Tilke, thanks for the time today in the Nike hot seat. Welcome. Thank you, guys.